Please remember that this matter should be viewed as a solicitation to trade. Trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. Optimus Futures LLC is not affiliated with, nor does it endorse any trading system, methodologies, newsletter, or similar service. We urge you to conduct your own due diligence. Now, here's your host, independent broker veteran and CEO of Optimus Futures, Matt Zimberg. Hi guys, this is uh, Matt Z from Optimus Futures. Today I want to talk about time management. And part of time management is how you spend your time in researching. So we have abundance of information on the internet. There are tons of books out there. And what I want to talk about is gaining access to people and material and content that would allow you to develop as a trader. I don't believe that everything that you will read out there will help you. So you need to be very, very selective about what you are actually exposed to. If you're exposed to practical and pragmatical material, it will definitely, or I should say in my opinion, it will bring you closer to your goal. If you read material that is more hypothetical in nature, more research-based, based on assumptions or things of that nature, then I would say that you will probably not get to your goal of thinking like a trader. So let's talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about how do you find the content out there that is relevant? How do you find and distinguish between people who have some sort of, I would say, an angle that would help you in trading? So the only examples that I can use is things that I do, and hopefully you'll find them useful and you're you're going to apply it in your uh, pursuit of looking for material and when you're doing research, and which is part of time management as a trader. So one of the things that I love to read is from people who actually have skin in the game. And so I look for people out there who are actual traders, actual portfolio managers, and they have some sort of a, an idea or an angle that I didn't think about before. One of the recent books that I read was from an author that his name is Ray Dalio, and he wrote the book Principles. And it's really a set of values that applies in personal life and the work ethic um, in building a large corporation that he built, Bridgewater. I believe they have $150 billion under management. They talk about automation. They talk about um, how they manage people. They talk about how they make decisions. And it's a very interesting approach to actual money management and risk. And I found it to be very, very useful um, in terms of how he makes decisions. And again, you have a person here who is actually a portfolio manager, manages capital, and I believe it would help you substantially in terms of how you think of managing your capital. There are other authors. There are other authors that are not necessarily are in the futures business, but they're in the trading business or they've built successful businesses. And one of those people, for example, that I love to read is a blog by Howard Lindzen. He's the founder of StockTwits, which is interestingly, I think it's an organization that's more successful than Twitter itself, but it's built on the Twitter API. Basically, it's a a social network of traders in, in stocks, Forex, futures. And he has a blog about, you know, about investing and trading. And the interesting part is that he actually is a very good listener. He, I think what makes him a good investor is that he listens to other ideas, he attends places, he flies, he meets with people. But again, you know, he's not a futures trader, but essentially the decision making that he does is based on all the information that people give him. And to people like him, uh, when I started reading him, which is the interesting part about smart people and intelligent people and humble people will share their information. They refer you to other sources of information. So they don't, they're not trying to be your guru. They actually want you to learn from others as well. So he, in his blog, he referred me to somebody, not me personally, but his readers to uh, Fred Wilson. And Fred Wilson is in the venture capital business. 
And I found his blog to be very interesting, especially the articles that talk about risk, because think about a venture capitalist. Venture capitalist is somebody that people come to him with ideas all the time. They're looking for ideas, but everybody says, hey, give me a million dollars. My idea is great. But he can't. He can't give everybody money or ask them, right? So there's a way that he evaluates things that are not known to him. He cannot know every technology out there, every company, every gadget, and every person. And nevertheless, he runs a very successful venture capital. And what I find similar between people who manage venture capital and traders is that they deal with a lot of uncertainty. So this is a person who's been around, I think, in the venture capital business, something like 30 years. And now he deals with a lot of unknown variables, which what traders actually deal with as well. So unknown variables, risk, and so forth. So there's a certain way he thinks about it, and he conveys it, and he shares it. So those kind of people can help you as well. There are people that are also academic. Now, I don't have a problem with academics. Um, I do have a problem with academics that never traded. I have a problem with researchers that never traded. And do I, essentially, do I think they have valid points about trading? Sure they do. You know, after all, trading, everybody can have an opinion. But I think that people who have actually traded will add a sense of um, something that I use a lot is practicality, being practical and pragmatical. So one of those guys is, for example, Nassim Taleb, who wrote the book Black Swan. But he also talks about concepts of randomness in trading or having skin in the game. And those are very interesting concepts. So also he's talking about how people who have actually skin in the game might have a very different opinion than others, or how the concept of randomness is judged from a trading perspective versus somebody on the street. And once you're exposed to those ideas, you really start thinking very, very differently. Let me give you an example of where you might start thinking differently when it comes to risk after reading those people so or or thinking about trading you know in a different way after reading those people's articles i mean a lot of traders say you know i want to make 200 dollars a day or 50 dollars a day or 500 dollars a day based on my capital but traders who have been in the game for a long time or investors don't have this mentality because this is as one of my smart colleagues said this is more of an employee mentality this is like you want a cash flow you know, is you want to be rewarded for your efforts. But those who are in the business of risk don't think like that. They don't say things like, I want to have $200 a day or $50 a day. They understand that there is a certain level of uncertainty, that there'll be months they'll lose, there's certain months they'll win, there'll be years they win, there'll be years that they lose, and hopefully they'll get to their goal, and hopefully they'll have, hopefully again, you know, above average return if they apply their method right, they apply risk right, and so forth. So as you expose yourself more and more and more to people that actually have skin in the game, who are writing about things that are related to risk taking, and again, it does not necessarily have to be from from trading. I love to read from all aspects of life. I read trading books, I read marketing books, I read sales books, and sometimes I read um, human psychology books. Every single one of them gives me an angle of how, how I, I take those things that are relevant to trading and I translate it or, think, or apply them in a way that I think they would be relevant in, in, in the trading world. Besides that, you have to think about the time that you have in terms of abundance. So, for example, it takes me to get sometimes anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes to work and I spend it in my car. So one of the things that I've done, I got this application, an app called Audible. And basically, it has Audible books. And now I just buy one every single time and I listen to it. I read at home and I love to listen to it in the car. But before I come to work, now I have more exposure. Now I have, now I dedicated another 20 minutes, 30 minutes to actually listening to somebody who shares a story. And there's thousands of books on this application. You know, choose the one that is um, appropriate for you. So again, you know, Get exposed to people that have skin in the game. That's the number one advice that I can give you. There's so much material out there on the internet. There's thousands of sites. And sometimes it's very, very hard to filter out what you should read and and what you shouldn't read. But I think as you get, if you become a little bit more uh, selective about the people that you choose how to read, you will see, you will start thinking, not thinking, but you'll start, uh, the word that I'm looking for, you'll start noticing that the people that, regardless of 
what they do in life, the successful people, the traders or people who run large organizations or hedge funds or anything of that sort, they have similar way of evaluating risk. And this is, you'll, you'll pick up on those trades, on those traits, and hopefully you start thinking along the way as well. I think it takes anywhere between, you know, probably three months to six months of, you know, where you'll see a slight change in your frame of mind. Because I know people personally that are always on the net. They're always looking at every article. They're looking at indicators. They're looking at everybody who proposes a solution. But I don't think you should listen to everyone or read everything. You should be extremely selective with your time. If you have an hour to read a day or two hours, make sure that it actually is going to contribute and make you a better decision maker. So time management in terms of your research is one of the most important things that you'll do as a trader. Let's talk for a minute about all the things that you're exposed to and how to be selective and a little bit snobbish with your time when it comes to reading other people's content. So let's, let's talk for, for a minute what you have out there. So you have uh, things like social media, like Twitter, you have blogs, you have forums, there's audiobooks, and then there's things that you come randomly on the internet. So what you have to do is basically think objectively, how have you been exposed to material right now, or to content, I should say. So if you come to the internet and you start punching in things and you find things randomly because of Google search, I would say that's really not the best method to do it, but you still may come across very good material. But the key is really to write to yourself, where is your biggest exposure in terms of content? Are you getting it from a forum? Are you getting it from blogs? Are you getting it from just randomly looking for things on the internet? And kind of set criteria for yourself. How will you use your time going forward in reading this content? So for example, if you think there are people out there that have good blogs, organize those blogs, you know, see, en enable the notifications on those blogs. If you are on forums, then make sure you follow the people that are of interest to you. Eliminate the ones or don't get into threads where the people just go on and on and on about things that are completely irrelevant and don't help you. If, if you still read traditional books, allocate time and decide how many books you want to read per week, per month, and also be selective about what, what you read. I know that people have, might have other interests outside of trading. I'm not saying that everything that you do in terms of your time should be related to that. But if you read books, make sure that you have, if it's 20 hours a week or 10 hours a week, or whatever the case is, make sure that those hours are dedicated to reading uh, books of people we actually have skin in the game. And again, if you didn't read Ray Dalio, it would be uh, principles. It would be a really good start. Really excellent book. So I hope that you're seeing here that what I'm trying to do is basically allocate those specific time slots for you. So you decide where you want to get your exposure, um, who you want to get your exposure from. And then there is something that I call a reflection time. When I read about something that makes me think while I read, I actually stop and I think, well, how can I apply this in my own trading if I can? So you should obviously do the same. Do not just go on and reading, um, you know, to catch up with more content. Rather, have a pause and say, you know what, this is an interesting concept. Could I utilize it in my own trading? Could I make this uh, more practical in my own trading and could I apply it? You will find that some things you can apply and some things you can't. And then you just go on and you will decide how, what is right and what is wrong for you. But as you will become a better decision maker, as you will read more content that is relevant to trading and less content that is promissory, meaning that not content that promises you to make you a great person and a great trader, because every single person out there that has skin in the game, who actually has been successful, will approach it with a sense and a dose of reality that is very healthy. 
and he will tell you the challenges that are there. This is where you always distinguish between the people that sell you dreams versus the people that, that tell it like it is. People who say it like it is always have a sense of harsh reality that you might encounter and the difficulty and the challenging challenges in implementing it. And this is what you're looking for. In every single content that you read, you want to look for the challenges that people are talking about. That is the most important thing, in my opinion at least, in deciding if the material is practical or not. That was my last point. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I wish I had time to do this more frequently, and I will definitely do my best, but I hope you really enjoyed this one. So until next time, all the best and best of luck in trading. Thank you. Please remember that this matter should be viewed as a solicitation to trade. Trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. Optimus Futures LLC is not affiliated with, nor does it endorse any trading system, methodologies, newsletter, or similar service. We urge you to conduct your own due diligence.